Hi friends, welcome to Vaibhava English Academy. Today, let us look at an interesting poem by Kamala Das and introduction. So, just like the title suggests, Kamala Das presents an introduction about herself, about what her beliefs are, about how a universal I should be and how women, especially in Indian society, are being dominated by male patriarchy. Coming to Kamala Das, uh, she was born in 1934 and died in 2009. Kamala Das is a confessional poet. She uh, has uh, in her poems and also in her autobiography, one can witness honest treatment of womanhood, female sensitivity and individuality. Kamala Das is also known, known as Madhavi Kuti or Kamalaya, Kamala Suraya. Coming to the major works, Kamala Das has written Alphabets of Lust uh, in 1976, My Story in 1976, My Story is the autobiography, Summer in Calcutta 1965 and Collected Poems in 1984. She has written in both English and Malayalam. Some of the awards given to her are Penn Philippines Asian Poetry Prize in 1963, Kerala Sahitya Academy Award in Mal Malayalam in 1969, Ashan World Prize 1985, Sahitya Academy Award in English 1985, Vailar Award in 1997, Eritachan Award in 2009 and in 1984 she was nominated for Nobel Prize for Literature. Moving on, uh, the poem introduction is a famous poem. It is written in confessional mode. The poem finds, uh, I mean, the poem was published in the collection called Summer in Calcutta. In the poem, Kamala Das asserts herself. She expresses the voice of women who want to keep their identity in patriarchal society by fighting against the dictates and norms which demand her to fit in one particular system. The society expects a woman not to question anything. In the very lines, in the very last line the, that is very famous, Kamala Das quotes, I too call myself I. By asserting I, Kamala Das asserts her individuality and denies the prejudices of a patriarchal society. She criticizes the society for making women's problem lay buried only to praise patriarchy. Here, she universalizes the suffering of women. Every woman should explore her womanhood rather than blindly obey what the society has pictured about her. Kamala Das identifies herself with other women in the world. The po poet seeks freedom and love. The poetry introduction echoes her philosophy on gender difference and tries to transcend the restrictions imposed on women. What she demands is complete individual freedom and a love that allows a body to come to terms with its own needs and a self that is allowed to celebrate. Now coming to the poem, let's uh, look at the lines and let us see what it means. I don't know politics but I know the names of those in power and can repeat them like days of a week or names of month beginning with Nehru. I am Indian, very brown, born in Malabar. I speak three languages, write in two, dream in one. The poem uh, consists, consists of a single stanza. It is not divided, but then just for the convenience of, uh, convenience of uh, explaining, I have just divided it into these lines. But then the entire poem is one stanza, please remember. Here, the poet speaks, uh, the narrating voice is first person and the poet says that although she does not know much about politics, but then she knows the people, she, she knows the politician's name as if one knows uh, the name, uh, names of uh, days of week, names of month, etc. So, just like one knows uh, days of a week, she knows people in power, starting with Nehru. And this is very famous quote. I am Indian, very brown, born in Malabar. Okay, that is about herself. 
she says she is very indian uh, very brown in color and born in malabar malabar region of kerala and she speaks three three languages write in two dream in one we all know kamala das writes in english and also malayalam and by the phrase dream in one she means the universal language of dream the language in which everybody sees dream okay don't write in english they said english is not your mother tongue why why uh, not leave me alone critics friends visiting cousins every one of you why not let me speak in any language i like the language i speak becomes mine its distortions its queerness all mine mine alone here kamala das refers to some of the critics friends cousins who all criticize her they say don't write in english because english is not your mother tongue to such critics or to such fake friends kamala das is questioning why not leave me alone why do you criticize my work she will write in any language she likes and kamala das says the language the way she speaks her style of uh, writing her style of uh, speaking even if the language has distortions distortions means gaps or uh, you know uh, some disturbances in the language if the language is not appropriate if it is queer if it is strange if it is weird even then the language is hers and hers alone that is her identity her language is her identity so she is uh, asking the critics not to criticize her for whatever she writes for whatever she speaks because language is hers moving on it is half english half indian funny perhaps but it is honest it is as human as i am don't you see its voice it voices my joys my longings my hopes and it is useful to me as cooing is to crows or roaring to the lions it is the human speech the speech of the mind that is here and not there a mind that sees and hears so she is continuing her dialogue with her critics telling uh, who are telling her not to write in english she says uh, i would write in english and also uh, others please mind your business and again she is saying kamala das says that her language may be half english half indian it might be funny but then her language is honest it is from the heart and uh, she says that it is human okay and it conveys the language conveys her joys her longings her hopes and it is very useful to her just like crows communicate by cawing by uh, just like lions communicate by roaring okay it is human speech and speech of the mind a mind that witnesses everything okay continuing the mind is aware not the deaf blind speech of trees in storm or of monsoon clouds or rain or in incoherent mutterings of the blazing funeral pyre i was a child and later they told me i grew for i became tall my limbs swelled and one or two places sprouted hair when i asked for love not knowing what else to ask for he drew a youth of 16 into the bedroom and closed the door he did not beat me but my sad woman body felt so beaten the weight of my breasts and womb crushed me i shrank pitifully so in this stanza we can find two ideas first of all she introduced herself as an indian she told how she knows all the politicians starting from nehru after that she she told that she speaks or rather she writes in english which is not her mother tongue and criticize critic for it and for that she is answering how her language how her language is useful to her how uh, her language along with all the distortions are her own how she expresses her honest review from her heart and now coming to the mind she says language is a uh, source of one's intellect she says that uh, it is not the deaf or blind speech of trees in storm we all know during storm what happens the leaves move the trees move and they make a sound it is unintelligible but human speech is not like that or monsoon clouds or rain or incoherent mutterings of the blazing funeral pyre we all know 
uh, when uh, a funeral pyre is lit that is a dead human body is kept on a stack of wood and then it is set alight that is the funeral pyre okay where it is a hindu tradition uh, in which a dead body is placed uh, on some wooden logs and then it is uh, just uh, fired it is set alight so that is human uh, that is a funeral pyre in funeral pyre what happens uh, after the fire starts consuming human body dead human body the bones crackle and such sounds come so kamla das says that uh, her language is intelligible it is not dumb as uh, trees swaying to winds or uh, the rain sound or the clouds of sound during monsoon or uh, a human body sound in funeral pyre okay so that is one set of idea coming to the next idea when she was a child <clears throat> she uh, told she was told that she grew up and how did she identify that a girl becoming into woman a, a girl blossoming into her womanhood so what happens uh, physical changes are seen in the body breasts go, grow and what happens and hair sprouts in in uh, some of the areas okay so by seeing that she understood that she has grown up that means she was still a child in her mind but then her body alone grew up and uh, when i asked for love that is uh, she explains her uh, marriage where she was married when she was 16 years old so uh, she met a man she met her husband and she asked for love because she did not know what else to ask for and then what happened he just closed the doors and uh, you know had the consummation uh, with a 16 year old child a girl whose body has grown but then her mind was still a child and what what happened the weight of womanliness she felt okay she she felt uh, he did not uh, she confesses uh, kamla das confesses that the husband did not meet uh, beat her he did not ill treat her but then her body uh, felt crushed her body felt the weight of breasts and womb okay and she uh, had to she felt pity about herself then i wore a shirt and my brother's trousers cut my hair short and ignored my womanliness dress in sarees be girl be wife they said be embroiderer be cook be a quarrel with servants fit in oh belong cried the categorizers don't sit on the wall or peep in through our lace lace draped windows be ami or be kamala or better still be madhavi kutti it is time to choose a name a role don't play pretending games here again in this stanza we can find two ideas so uh, initially uh, we can find the continuing idea how she felt her womanliness the weight of womanliness uh, through her breasts and her womb and so what what she did she started wearing men's clothes she wore a shirt brother's trousers she uh, cut her hair short she tried to ignore her womanliness because she felt the weight of it and then so that is one idea coming to the next idea now the society is speaking to her society the male chauvinistic society or patriarchy is speaking to her and what does that say it says a woman to dress in sarees especially indian women to dress in sarees be girlish be like a wife a caretaker a comfort giver okay be embroiderer be a cook be a quarrel with servants so these are the roles that the society wants indian women to fit in okay and the categorizers who are categorizers it is the society itself the indian society the society what does it say it say fit in somewhere fit in you into your space fit in the role of a wife fit into the role of a woman okay and what should a woman not do she should not sit on the wall or peep through laced windows okay and one and kamla das says she is expected to choose her name be it ami or kamala or madhavi kutti whatever it is choose a name and choose a role if you are a wife you have to play the uh, role of a wife if you are choosing the role of a mother you have to 
play the role of a mother don't play pretending games so here we can find the norms and restrictions forced posed by the society on women moving on don't play at schizophrenia or be a nympho don't cry embarrassingly loud when children in love i met a man loved him call him not by any name he is every man who wants a woman just as i am every woman who seeks love in him the hungry haste of rivers in me the ocean's tireless waiting who are you i ask each and every one the answer is it is i anywhere and everywhere i see the one who calls himself i in this world he is tightly packed like the sword in his sheath it is i who drink lonely drinks at 12 midnight in hotels of strange towns it is i i who laugh it is i who make love and then feels shame it is i who lie dying with a rattle in my throat i am sinner i am saint i am the beloved and the betrayed i am no joy i have no joys that are not yours no aches which are not yours i too call myself i so the society advises the poet or advises every woman to choose a name choose a role and don't play at schizophrenia schizophrenia is uh, is a uh, physical condition or rather a disease in which people forget people forget their past people forget who they are so don't play pretending games or be a nympho nympho is a person who is uh, very much interested in various sexual activities even that is not allowed in a society kamla das says uh, a, a person is not allowed to cry embarrassingly loud when you are children in love so these are the up to this time uh, she was speaking about the restrictions placed on women by the society now coming to yet another idea okay she says she met a man and loved him just like the man reciprocated her love okay she is not giving any particular name it is every man who loves every woman okay and what happens she asks him who are you and he says i and to whichever person she has asked who are you the answer is i okay and man is like perfectly fit that perfectly fit is used in the phrase sword in his sheath we all know that swords are kept in a sheath so that it does not uh, cut or uh, it is kept safely comfortably so man in the indian society is very comfortable with its rules and regulations because it is a patriarchal society which is very much benefiting to man rather than to woman okay and then uh, later on uh, kamla das expresses her own ideas of of her own identity or of how she sees herself okay she says that she is a person who is lonely who drinks lonely at midnight uh, she travels to uh, many hotels of stranger towns and uh, she laughs loud she makes love she herself feels uh, shame and she says that she is a sinner and also she is the saint she is the beloved and betrayed you see uh, the opposites she is uh, one and uh, she is uh, no i mean she is no different from opposites we all know sinner and saint opposites but then both are her she has both attributes of sinner and also saint that means she is the action doer and she is the receiver of actions okay she is beloved and also she is the betrayed so she knows both joy and pain and further she says i have no joys that are not yours now she is addressing the speaker no sorry uh, the reader she says that the reader and she are one and the same she knows all the joys and sorrows of what a human being experiences okay she uh, initially she spoke about universal women how women from entire world feel or how uh, women who are suffering patriarchy feel now she is speaking uh, about universality about every how every human how every human being feel she says that 
even though she is a she is an indian she is from malabar she is a woman but then she feels the same pains and aches and she loves the same joys that any human being in this world would enjoy i too call myself i so this is a very famous and last line of this poem coming to the first section let's just have a glimpse see here it is divided so that you can get kamla das's idea about her introduction in the very first section she uh, says about her knowledge of politicians uh, just like the days and months of a year and she says that those in power have remained in her mind and this shows their power and influence over common people she mentions nehru who was the first prime minister of india and she says about herself that she is very indian very brown from malabar region of kerala coming to the next one she says about uses of language she says that she knew three languages she writes in two and dreams in one universal language and then she was not advised to write in english as it was not her mother tongue kamla das confesses that although her language is half indian and half english her language is honest and human it is not meaningless like nature sound like trees uh, swinging in the uh, uh, during a storm or any animal sounds her language makes sense to the mind all related to her criticize her and then she asks the critics why do they care about what she speaks kamla das feels a deep connection with words she uses she says that the language becomes mine its distortions it its queerness all mine mine alone okay moving to the next idea that is growing up kamla das speaks about a girl uh, growing up to becoming a woman kamla das was married at 16 years her husband did not beat her but but her for, body belt I'm sorry body felt beaten up she was crushed by her womanliness i quote the weight of my breasts and womb crushed me so she tried to abandon her womanliness by dressing like men and cutting hair short moving to the next idea uh, in the next idea she speaks about uh, how life of an indian woman should be or how the society expects an indian woman to be the society instructs a woman to dress in sarees be girlish be a good wife and do wifely chores like embroidering cooking quarreling with servants the society wants a woman to fit in belong cried the categorizers don't sit on the wall don't peep don't laugh or cry aloud and then society expects a woman to choose a name and a role okay and the society does not expect a woman to play pretending games then the next idea of universal i Kamala Das says that just like any ordinary woman she loved a man the man reciprocated her love to whomever and to whichever person she asked who are you the person said i okay she feels kamala das feels that men are very much in rhyme with the world and he is fitted into the space because he is comfortable over there and kamala das describe herself as a doer and re receiver of deeds and she uh, tells about her own identity she says that she drinks at midnight stays in hotels of stranger towns she is the saint and she she compares herself with the opposite attributes she describes the universality of human existence i quote i have no joys that are not yours no aches which are not yours i too call myself i okay going to the quotes these three quotes are very famous it might be asked for various competitive exams i am very indian very brown born in malabar i speak three languages write in two dream in one and quote first quote coming to the second one fit in or oh, belong cry the categorizers then the third i am a saint i am the beloved and betrayed i call myself i so please note these quotes are from the poem an introduction by kamla das coming to the themes see feminism is very much seen in the poem kamla das uh, ignored her womanliness cut her hair and dressed in men's attire to gain equality with men okay then the theme of male chauvinism man and society ask a woman 
not to write uh, and to take up the societal roles okay the third theme is women's quest for identity uh, self identity okay and uh, we can see uh, the longingness for freedom and also uh, we can see the theme of marriage what happens especially in indian society how a woman is asked to fit into the role of a wife in marriage so these are the themes moving on to the literary devices as i told you this entire poem is just one stanza and enjambment enjambment is continuing lines the lines uh, do not have one particular line do not have full stop it just uh, keeps on continuing to two or three lines in every every sentence if you take in this poem you can find the device of enjambment where uh, the uh, lines does not break it continues uh, for three or four lines and followed by a full stop okay we can see uh, the repetition repetition of i numerous times anaphora anaphora is the repetition of a particular word vowel sound so that is again seen coming to imagery we have the imagery of uh, visual imagery uh, auditory imagery okay visual imagery she pictureizes she uh, pen pictures the images of uh, trees uh, swinging in the storm again here we can uh, hear the noise that comes from na nature for example a human body burning up in pyre funeral pyre okay so here we can find both visual imagery and auditory imagery so that's it for now friends thank you so much